You stand oh, over there oh, and you oh, shut up. up. Hey, man, we got our rights. Don't be pulling any deleterious malfeasance on us. You watch your mouth, punk. Because I don't want to hear language like that. You get me? Hey, hey, hey. That's citizens review board. Come on. Come review board. Settle down. I've it. Settle down. I'm not taking it anymore. I don't care. Come on. One, two, three. Two, three. What are you doing? Two, four, four. You out of your mind? Man, you seem a little tense tonight. Yeah, I am. What is it? It's my wife. What's the problem? She wants to have a baby now, so bad. Well, why don't you try knocking boots? Knocking boots? Bumping ugly. Huh? Doing the nasty. The wild thing. You know what I mean? Bang, 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 bang. That's bang. the problem. I don't get to spend any time with her anymore. And when I am home, it's like she's avoiding sex. You ought to try to be a little more sensitive, man. You know what they're talking about? Most of the time, the guy in the force. That's right. I voted for you. Twice. She's just afraid, Arch. Just afraid she's not going to be able to get pregnant. What's to be afraid? It's like making breakfast. You bring home that slab of bacon. She's got those eggs. Scramble them up, bada boom, bada bang, she's got an omelet in the oven. What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about you going home. It'd be nice for Lana to wake up in the morning and find you lying next to her for a change. No, no, I did all this paperwork now. Paperwork? Oh, hell, we can do our own paperwork. Oh, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we don't have to read it, right? We graduated from L.A. County That's School. Right. Yeah, you're in the paper, man. Look, man, like, it's easy to go home. Is it a little crazy for me? The man knocked them boots. Yeah, yeah. bada bing, bada bang. Oh, see? Yeah. Oh, with the pen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Last name first. First uh, name last. Thanks, Jeff. Chicken ass. What's today's date? Today, uh, how do you spell deleterious mouthpiece? That's irrelevant, man. Just write your name. I'm too misty and too much love. I guess you didn't have time to do my paperwork. Huh? Guess. Yes. All right, go on, get out of Sweet. here, all of you. They did a damn good job, too. One of them even did it in Spanish. Hey, man, man. Mm. Check this. I'd like to reach down Ned Ravine's throat and pull out his guts with my bare hands. Anything else you need to know? Jeez, you hear that? Yeah, just working through his anger. Trying to find a constructive outlet. Are you kidding? He'll do it. The guy's a friggin' loony, man. Trust me. Spent a lot of time with him when I was preparing his case. He's a very sweet and sensitive human being. Then I'd like to smash his head like a ripe melon. He gets a little melodramatic sometimes. Then I'd like to cut off all his fingers and bite out his liver with these teeth. <laughs> he loves to exaggerate. Christ, Ned, you in deep shit. Well, I got high boots. Lieutenant Ravine. I want to see you, Ned. Why are you calling me? Because I told you, that's why it's finished between us. No. No. I am not sucking on anything of yours anymore. It's done. Over! Wrong number. Will the defendant rise and face the bench? That's you. I'd like to congratulate Mr. Pokey for setting yet another unusual legal precedent. This is the first case I've ever tried in which the jury was found insane. What are you, about a 38 love? The jury will be remanded to the Center for Unclear Thinking in Simi Valley. Court's adjourned. Hey, thanks, Mr. Levine. Levine, justice is served. Huh? <laughs> Laura? You know, I mean, it's not just the way crimes escalate from down here and begin to work. Who's in charge? Us or them? Barry, the bottom line is we need more of you boys out on the streets. Yeah. Yeah.
you think of a married man who gave in to those wild, sensual, raging desires? Oh, God. Golly, I... What if at just one crazy moment he couldn't resist and he got knocked for a loop and he lost control? See, that might be okay. What if that, 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 that tidal wave of lust just... It crashed down on him and he got... He got sucked into that vortex of just... Wild, thrashing, urges that just... Explode! <laughs> well, it's not your problem. I'll work it out. One question. What kind of gun did she use? That's a question for the arresting officer. Aren't you the arresting officer? You have to ask her attorney. But aren't you her attorney? Only her husband can answer that. What type of outfit would Lana wear at the trial? She'll be wearing a lovely gray pinstripe skirt, high collar white silk blouse, and black suede dorset pumps. Does it have a matching jacket? No comment. Uh, cotton array on. I said no comment. But we need to know these things. Did she eat any of the victim's body parts? Boy, they're throwing some tough questions out there today. They're just doing their job. Yeah? Well, I call it a high-tech lynching of an uppity white housewife. Well, here we are. What's this? The only sale available. They had that serial killer locked up here. Oh, you mean the one who talks his victims to death and then eats them? Hannibal the lecturer? Yep. But they let him out for a three-week tour, publicize his new book. To serve man. Huh? It's a good book. He autographed it. Go in the back. Take a look. Oh, too arch. Love to have you for dinner sometime. Hannibal. Hey. That's very nice. They're waiting for you. They don't want to start without her attorney being present. place could use a good exterminator. Get the SWAT team. SWAT team! Ned. Ned, you gotta get me out of here. I'm going buggy. I know. Judge said no bail. Don't worry. You just tell the truth. you will be fine. All right, who's gonna handle this interrogation? It's your bust, your beef, your call, your collar, your dime, your dame. Your wife. All right. You... Okay. I'll handle it. <clears throat> Sorry, Mrs. Ravine. There's no makeup allowed in this building. So what are you gonna do? Arrest me for primping? Don't give us a tough time, lady. Just spill it. Now, what were you doing on a train? Well? As your attorney, I really must advise you now. You don't have to answer these questions. Don't play games with us. Who put you up to it? Where'd you get that gun? And what's your leave with the CIA? I... I will not allow this unwarranted badgering of my client to continue. She's going to have her day in court. And I really want to thank you, Mrs. Ravine, for being so cooperative with these gentlemen. I really appreciate it. 
You know that down, Laura? Every word she said? Yep, both of them. Those are my panties. We had talked earlier about uh, Mrs. Shady being the first offensive player in this trial, and she certainly is offensive. <laughs> Go along with that. Judge Skanky uh, appearing in along with still the 12-member uh, jury panel and uh, evidently bringing into evidence some of the uh, brighter moments in her son's life. And uh, this jury is being held spellbound, as are the spectators that are here in the courtroom. Looks like Mrs. Shady is uh, actually putting sort of a move on Judge Skanky. There could be something going on later tonight between those two. Judge Skanky seems to be getting a little excited himself, and I'm sure it's not about the pictures. It has something to do with the uh, upper portion of Mrs. Shady. Well, she's getting rather emotional now, and uh, maybe this might be a good time for us to back off and listen. Uh-oh, yep. Well, this is the thing that, uh, that everybody in this, uh, in this courtroom had feared. There it is. They were afraid of this type of violence from, uh, from Mrs. Shady, and uh, she is being admonished now by Judge Skanky. Well, I'll say one thing about her. She's a banny rooster. She has balls. Well, she's going right after Judge Skanky. Well, two things she's got right. It's a free country and a free finger. And this reporter knows one thing for sure also, that Judge Skanky has certainly been in a lot worse places than Mrs. Shady's finger. There could be a penalty... Illegal use of the finger, that's what it looks like to this reporter. And evidently, yes it is, the bailiff has her now and is going to eject her. This is, this is going to be the first ejection of this trial. Oh, a beautiful kick in the groin by Mrs. Shady. And that's something that we had been warned about uh, prior to her testimony. They said she was uh, not a very nice looking person, but I find her rather attractive. Although I don't get out too often. <laughs> Al, in what looks like uh, it will be one of the more dramatic moments of this trial, we talked earlier about uh, Mrs. Helen Shady being the first offensive piece of evidence in this trial, and taking a look at her as we see her for the first time, she is offensive. Woo! And uh, she is uh, talking now to counsel, the uh, jury, uh, the 12-member board, uh, trying to lean in, and evidently she is... She has just gone into her bag and uh, is pulling out uh, what appears to be a, a photo album of sorts. And uh, evidently it is, it is a, uh, an album that appears to be photos of the deceased, uh, Max Shady. Uh, we look at Judge Skanky, who is uh, leaning in, and I'm not too sure if Skanky is checking the pictures at all. He appears to be uh, surveying the upper portion of Mrs. Shady's body, which uh, we had been told prior to the trial that she was not a very attractive woman, but uh, I find her not all that bad, although I don't get around too often and uh, pretty well uh, locked up with my job. She uh, is uh, very emotional here, uh, evidently uh, trying to uh, get the attention of the jurors and uh, this uh, okay, this, this murder trial that, uh, well, she's tearing something up now. It, it evidently is Judge Skanky's address. Uh, he has been known to, uh, to frequent uh, homes of prospective uh, jurors and, uh, and people uh, who have uh, been in his courtroom. You can take a lean now. And as we lean in and look, we are almost getting a beaver shot. Well, I should take my mind off of that and uh, concentrate on the, uh, the uh, trial that's going on up front. The bailiff, uh, uh, now look at Judge Skanky. He is, uh, he is really getting excited and uh, 
And we can tell that by the, uh, the blinking of his eyes and the uh, movement of his robe. <laughs> well, uh, evident now she is upset. Now she's upset. And uh, I'll tell you something, this reporter, uh, well, let's wait here and see what happens. Well, she is, uh, now she is admonishing and she is really ripping into to the defendant and Judge Skanky now telling, telling Mrs. Shady to, uh, to evidently put her finger down. And uh, what she has just, boy, she's right on Skanky now. And, and she has told Skanky that she can put her finger anywhere she wants and uh, has had it any place. And this reporter knows for sure that Judge Skanky has been in a lot worse places than Mrs. Shady's finger. Boy, I'll tell you, she's a banny rooster, isn't she? She's got balls. <laughs> they told us she was feisty. The bailiff has her now, and she really seems to be enjoying herself. And what? wow, a kick to the chops. And uh, boy, look at the pipes on that bailiff, will you? No wonder she's enjoying herself. Judge Skanky pounding, pounding and trying to get some water back in this courtroom. <laughs> A marker. Ian Marks. And action. Mrs. Shady? Mm-hmm. Would you tell us about your son, Max? Was he a good boy? He was the best. And that's not just a mother talking. You can ask anybody. I suppose he got into trouble once in a while, hmm? like all kids do. Well, little jokes, little pranks and things. He was so cute. I, I, I've got photographs, actually. Um, right here. Oh. <laughs> this is, is when he set the cat on fire. But the cat deserved it. He kept us up all night, coughing up fur balls. What are these? Marshmallows. He used to love to toast marshmallows over a roaring cat. And, you know, it's all, all burnt and crispy on the outside, and soft and squidgy on the inside. Oh, right here. This was taken on the very day that he left the priesthood to join the Green Berets. This is cute. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That was during his Ku Klux Klan phase. Um, he used to take the sheets right off my bed. <laughs> he used to cut holes, you know, in the, for, for the eyeballs. Oh, what a, what, what a little thing he was. Oh, is this Max fixing his back? All the tools? That shouldn't even be in here at all. Franklin, his half-brother, sticking little pecker. I knew he would never come up to anything. Oh, here he is with his little Nazi friends. I, I didn't like them very much. They used to goose-step into my kitchen, eat all my cookies and cream, and, and, and call me a Jew bitch. Neither of which I am. Oh, look, 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 you see? Here's Max with his chainsaw. He, he loved to go to the National Park and cut down those old giant redwoods. It used to make him feel so patriotic. You know, I, 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 I feel that if he had not been so successful as a criminal, he would have been a lumberjack. Now, of course, he won't be anything. It was his, that woman, your wife. Pulled a gun and put Max in his grave! Mrs. Shady, I cannot allow you to point your finger in my courtroom. It's impolite. Don't you tell me where to put my finger, young man. This finger has been in more places than you've ever dreamed of! Mrs. Shady, moderate yourself. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe women really are like a big jigsaw puzzle with pieces that never seem to fit where you want them to. All I know is there's three things men can't possibly ever do. Understand women, 
give birth and program a VCR. And giving birth is the easy one. Ned. Hmm. Knock off the chatter, will you? Clarence, we won't be needing you anymore. I figured. We can make our own music now. <laughs>